at first I was like, okay, it's obviously it's obviously poison ivy because you know the red hair looked like they were green and whatnot. I was like, yeah, that's poison ivy. Then she took out something that looked like a flamethrower. I was like, oh, this could be like a female fly- firefly, like Gotham had. And then no, it was it was poison ivy. I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman. People of Earth, I am Dark Side. Lord of Apocalypse! Service with a smile? I know about all your other major enemies, but you never mentioned him. He was the biggest, wasn't he? Oh, come on! It's Lex Flip and Luthor! Why should we trust him? What? Like a bunch of super friends? More like a Justice League. We are jumping into Volume 2 of Batman the Animated Series, and all three of us are here again. Bro, we're in... We are on that grind. It's definitely not. What? I gotta change my clothes, man. It's been like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. I would hope you change your clothes. <laughs> Thank you. No, okay. I didn't. So we we watched the first three episodes of Volume Two: Eternal Youth, Perchance to Dream, and the Cape and Cal Conspiracy. Connor, what did you think of Eternal Youth? The return um, the of first... Poison Ivy. Oh, the return. Yeah, the first, like, minute or so of this, I kept getting bamboozled, because at first I was like, okay, it's obviously it's obviously Poison Ivy, because, you know, the red hair looked like they were green and whatnot. I was like, yeah, that's Poison Ivy. Then she took out something to look like a flamethrower. I was like, <laughs> oh, this could be, like, a female fl- firefly, like Gotham had. And then, no, it was, it was Poison Ivy. <laughs> so I kept getting hit with, like, these, these plot, these, um, plot... I cannot speak, but I kept getting hit with things that changed, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. Good start to volume two. But, uh, um, yeah, it was an interesting episode. I liked how um, Bruce didn't want to burn down Forest and Amazon. Like, they had that little bit where he's like to his scientists, you know, you better not start burning down forests and all that sort of stuff. And then when he won the $10 million, and he's just like, that's nice. Yeah. Ten million dollars, yeah. casual ten million. Mm, oh, yeah. does, doesn't a forest burn down in Batman and Robin? Well, I don't know if it's a forest, but like that lab with all those plants. Well, the lab um, burned down. I don't wasn't it like? Forest. Well, I don't know. There were a lot of plants around it. It looked like. Wasn't it like in a forest? It was in a forest, but yeah. I don't. Th- I don't think they specifically said like. Well, you you would think if that whole lab burned down, the forest caught on fire too. Yeah, but Batman and Robin is so stupid, I just never really oh. thought of it. Yeah, I'm just before. saying, it's something else that Bat- Batman and Robin stole from this show and just made <laughs> ten times worse. <laughs> uh, Batman and Robin isn't even that bad. It's bad. Oh, but... no, it's a, it's my favorite movie of all time. I'm not trying to talk on it or anything. Okay, back on track. <laughs> Eternal Youth. Oh. Uh, Alfred, Alfred got him a woman. Yeah, Alfred's got a baby. That was great. That was a really good plot, actually. And that was probably my favorite of the episode, was Alfred stuff. And now he's got his got a girl and uh, going to the Eternal Youth Spa and all that. And Pamela Isley's trying to bamboozle them. And um, yeah, I thought, thought overall it was... I thought it was, again, an average episode that the Alfred and Maggie stuff made fun. If that makes sense. Um, Alfred got a lot. Like, this is probably the most story Alfred's gotten out of any episode, would you say? Like, so far? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Poison Ivy's just medusifying people. But instead of stone, yeah. they're turning into wood. <laughs> or roots, whatever they're turning into. Yeah, whatever that was. Some Do they ever explain how they, like, de-treeified everyone at the end? No. They all died. Okay, it just happened. Cool, because got it. Batman doesn't even say he had an antidote. He just said he had, like, yeah. something that, uh... Like, reflects the effect, so, like, when it hits him, it doesn't affect him. Mm-hmm. He's not like, I got this antidote that if you've already been affected by it, you're cured. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess if he can make something that prevents it from happening to you, he can just make a cure from that, like, a derivative from that or something. I don't know. I don't know how this works. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Everest, what did you think? Um... So, like, I don't think this is a bad episode, but I think it's pretty average. Um, I def- like, the Alfred stuff is definitely the best part. Like, just him with, you know, Maggie, I- I thought that stuff was good. But the whole thing about, like, uh, Pamela Isley trying to, like, bring all of these people who had, you know, hurt 
her plants and stuff to this spa, and then, you know, I don't even know the word, tre I'm using treeified, alright, treeify everyone, um, I, I just, I never thought that plot was like that good, it, it just didn't work for me personally, and then when Batman, uh, comes and has to, like, fight her, I actually think it was an alright, like, kind of end, but just overall, I wasn't feeling the plot of this episode very much. I would have honestly much rather just have, like, a full Alfred and Maggie episode, because I thought that stuff was so fun, but I was, like, Pamela Isley going undercover, I guess, and, you know, doing the whole, like, spa thing. I wasn't a big fan of it, that's just me, but... I, it was an average episode, I guess. Yeah, and, like, GCPD shouldn't have needed Batman to figure out, like, what was happening to all these rich people. It's like, oh, they all disappeared after they went to this Eternal Use Spa. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, some of that was kind of stupid. I wonder what's going on there. <laughs> Poison Ivy is running this mysterious spa, and everywhere they go there ends up looking like a tree. Yeah, well, well, not the, only, the only detective where Batman has to do is go to this woman's house, find the same tape that he got, and like, hmm. Yeah. It's like, this wow. tape looks familiar. Uh, mm -hmm. the, and when he, uh, like, notices Alfred's gone, like, after he comes back, and then he notices he's, he's not in the manor after he sees the tape, just the raw emotion in Conroy's voice, like, Alfred! Just screaming yeah. Alfred. I love that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I, I can't add much more than that. You know, Poison Ivy and Medusa fighting people. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Yeah, I'm, I have not been impressed with Poison Ivy so far. Oh, um, me neither. Yeah, she hasn't been a particularly... I don't know. She's not an interesting character. Like, I don't really think she's an interesting character, even outside of this. Me either. Yeah. I've never found her that interesting. Yeah, I've never liked Poison Ivy. I like Catwoman, but... Poison Ivy has never done it for Poison me. Poison Ivy's whole thing is that she, like, seduces people and then likes plants. There's not really much more to her than that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. She's for the plants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I like this episode just slightly more than her first episode just because of the Alfred stuff. Yeah, I think I liked it more than her first episode as well. And not by much, but I did enjoy it a bit more. So, uh, let's see. So your episode did of Harvey Dent, though. Yeah, yeah, I did have Harvey Dent. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and give this some letter grades. First episode, volume one. What did you think of it, Connor? What would you give it? I would give it a C. A C. Okay, uh... I would... Meh. <laughs> Everest. Um, I I'll give it a... <laughs> I'll probably go, like, a C-. minus. It it's close to a C, but... I just... I, I thought the plot was pretty stupid. Yeah, I'll give I'll give it a C. I mean, it was it was fine. Yeah, I've, um, I've taken your job of being the guy that gets the same grade as Braden. Okay. <laughs> okay, well we'll see if that continues with episode two, perchance to dream. <laughs> Connor, what did you think of this episode? Um, this is an awful lot like the asylum episode I thought, where you know, he's kind of in like he thinks he's living. A different life kind of but i know the asylum episode wasn't it didn't go that far into saying it was a different life he just the batman was a whole like delusion thing but um i did actually really enjoy this episode i do like kind of takes on characters whether they're dreams alternate realities or whatnot um this was i know i always bring up like other episodes of superhero shows but this was really really similar to arrows 100th in that it was a dream machine um, there was another version of the hero there. You mean Arrows 100th and... was really similar to this? Hmm. Yeah, Connor. And this Let's is really similar to a Superman comic that was later adapted into Justice League Unlimited. Oh yeah, whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, and uh, the Justice League Unlimited episode is called For the Man Who Has what, Everything. For a Man Who Has yeah. Everything. Yeah, Yeah, and it's in Supergirl. Yeah, I've well. noticed I really love episodes like this. <laughs> yeah, they're mm -hmm. good. But, um, it, like, it like shows you what they want that they know isn't real. And yeah, they, exactly. they don't mm -hmm. want it because they know it isn't real. Like, who would want something fake? Um, no response. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think someone like that. What? But, um, yeah, it was, it was a good 
good episode. Ed. It was cool he was going Mari Slane in this world. It's like it's weird. There was only one appearance of Catwoman before this episode, wasn't there? Or first appearance, or one other appearance of Selena? Yeah, it was. So her. it's weird that they're already setting up the they'd marry each other in a fake world. Like, I know that in every kind of version of Batman, there's always a thing between Batman and Catwoman. But the fact that they've only met once before this, and already Batman's dream world would be to marry Catwoman, is a little bit too. Yeah, it's like it moved I mean, too fast. It's like we skipped some episodes between them. She's like the only girl we've really seen him like get intimate with, though. But see, that's the thing. Like, I feel like they should have had a few more episodes with Catwoman for this to make sense. Like, even if it is it the only one he's been kind of romantic with in this, it still is a little bit too quickly, in my opinion. Like, there's got to be some other girl he was in love with at some point before the show that he would have thought of instead. But I know it would make sense from our yeah, point of view. Well, yeah, you see, well, you like, see, you, we, you we see that. Know. You see that later down the line that he was in love with someone else. So, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I see what you're saying. No, I. Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, uh, I. They just assume that most people know how the Batman Catwoman dynamic is, and they're usually all yeah. yeah. So. Like I, I, I didn't think twice of it because that's just Batman and Catwoman. Yeah, I didn't really think about it, but it, it is a good point. Um, I, I would like more of the dream stuff, but I had only a twenty minute runtime. They couldn't have nineteen minutes of it be dream stuff and another minute devoted to the wrapping up. They need to devote more time to wrapping it up. Um, so I did think the jump from the alternate stuff right into how it was on Mad Hatter behind it was a little bit too quick, but I got that there was not really another way they could have done it. Um, but it was cool seeing the Mad Hatter again. I thought he was actually better here than he was in his first appearance. Uh, oh, yeah. Not that he was more well written, just he was more interesting. Like seeing Batman come out of the dream machine and just immediately start beating up uh, Hatter's henchmen was pretty cool. But yeah, I thought it was a really enjoyable episode. Yeah, and he didn't even beat up Hatter. Hatter's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, I I would have given you everything you wanted just so you would get out of my life. Yeah, I so would have given you the know. perfect wife just so you could get out of. My Classic Jervis. Classic, classic. Yeah, I love this episode a lot. So, uh, the Everest, uh, what do you think? Oh, I, I, this episode, this is like, man, I'd have to really look at it. This is close to like top 10 episodes of this series for me. Um, I, I think the whole dream aspect is so cool and I always love stories like this. Like, for the man who has everything is one of my, um, uh, favorite justice league unlimited episodes and so i i think it works great would this have been like the first piece in media that's kind of like this though for like superheroes well i mean the superman comic was before this i'm pretty sure yeah but i i mean like in uh, on television. screen yeah on screen that was a better one um i think so so that's pretty cool that they kind of took that Superman comic idea and brought it into this. And I think it works really well. And so I I just loved seeing kind of the mental battle with Bruce Wayne because he knows stuff isn't right. But then he kind of wants it to stay for a minute because he's like, oh, like, um, you know, Wesley makes him calm down for a second because she's like, Oh, I, this is your actual life, and, you know, you've just been kind of making up the Batman thing. And so then at first he's like, oh, Mom and Dad, they're alive, and like, yeah, I'm good. And then he sees that, you know, their language is all different, and he just knows that something isn't right. And I think the stuff with him and the Dream World's Batman in so the Clock Tower, or... Something I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. Some kind of tower, like, like bell tower. A bell tower, probably. Yeah, uh, I thought that was pretty cool, and I don't have like any real complaints with this episode. I would like maybe agree that you know it is a little bit abrupt from tra like transferring from the dream to that uh, real world and him having to stop Mad Hatter, but I love that they made it Mad Hatter, and 
I think he works well for this. So yeah, I love this episode. I mean, it's like he basically killed himself within the dream, I guess, so that world didn't exist to him anymore. Because he just jumps off the bell tower and then it goes back to like, yeah. reality. Yeah. So is that to say, like, if Bruce ended up like dying of old age in that dream, would he just wake up in real life? Yeah, like, would, or would he be old? Well, maybe. Yeah, that's or, like good. they say every dream. Well, no, because he's like starved like, like, five seconds of real lifetime. Yeah, yeah, you live dreams a lot faster. Yeah. Also, I read that where he's like, um, reading comes from the right side that's of the brain, what I was about to bring and up. dreaming comes from the left. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. I was like, that's a really cool scene. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's not true, but... <laughs> I actually did hear you can't read in dreams. Really? Uh, it's like a thing where you're not able to read in your dreams. I might have gotten that from something like this, actually, I mean, already. I, I don't be. remember ever reading in a dream, but... I don't remember reading in a dream either, so... I don't like reading, so maybe ask someone that likes reading. <laughs> <laughs> if no, if, 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 I just looked it up. It said you can't read real life, and or you can't read in dreams. Really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Whoa. That's pretty sick. Bruce Wayne's smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's smarter than everyone, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah I really like how uh, he knew to go to the bell tower because he was like, this is... Always that was part one of my nightly patrol. patrol. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. And he knew Batman was the solution because that's who he really is. You know, Bruce Wayne's the mask. And w- even when he's uh, talking to... is it? Yeah, it's Alfred, and he's like, it's all wrong. Like, everything about his life. Yeah. yeah. He's like, it sounds great, but it's it's not real. <laughs> this is wrong. And then the end with Mad Hatter. I, I really love this episode, and I can't really add any more that I haven't said or that you two brought up, so let's go ahead and give it some lighter grades. And like Ever said, this is, yeah, this is definitely in my top ten. It's one of my, when people ask me my favorite episodes of the show, it's one of the first ones I think of. So, yeah. uh, Connor, what would you give it? Um, i give it a B plus. I feel like that's going to be a lot lower than what you guys are going to give it. Okay, uh, Everest, I have a feeling we're giving this the same grade. <laughs> Bro, I, I'm gonna go, baby, I'm giving this one an A+. Plus. I, I absolutely, like, I, I didn't totally remember it, and when I saw it, I was like, dude, such a good episode. Yeah, I'm giving it an A+, plus too. There, there aren't many more episodes of the show it's that I enjoy more. Bad. Yeah. What'd you say, Connor? You're making me feel bad. Oh. You're showing Clock King all the love, but not not Mad Hatter. Yeah, any. you're not yeah. showing Mad Hatter. Hey, hey, if Clock King was behind all this, this would be an A plus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it would make less sense. Connor has a Clock King fetish confirmed. Okay, well, Connor, you'll get to see well, yeah, him. YouTube, some, no, you'll, you'll get to see him again down the line. I hope so. <laughs> you already know that's just an automatic A plus for Connor. <laughs> Probably. If fucking didn't show up, that would just be the DCA will be a write off for me. I'd, I'd, <laughs> well, I'd, well, I'd you have something and... you have something to look forward to now. Yeah. Okay, every jump. night I'm gonna wake up and or every morning I'm gonna wake up and say I hope this is the day I find out where clocking is in the DCAU. <laughs> okay, jumping into the last episode, the Cape and Cal conspiracy. Connor, what do you think of this episode? Um. I wasn't really big on this episode, to be honest. Um, it, it, Wormwood okay, and the Baron. It feels like it should be like a Riddler episode, doesn't it? Yeah, it oh, does. Oh, dude, that was, I was thinking so much that I was like, why isn't this just a Riddler episode? Like, like yeah, this dude's leaving, he's leaving, he's, like he's, leaving Riddle. Riddle. he's leaving Riddles. He's leaving Riddles, he's got all these elaborate traps. <laughs> yeah. It's literally like Riddler with like a tiny hint of um, Toy Man, and that's like yeah. exactly Wormwood. I didn't think the Wormwood and the Baron were that interesting characters, and like again, it would have made more sense for them to be most other DC villains. Well, but the, then the Baron was, was more of a plot device than a character. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, it was cool seeing the Bat Signal for the first time. I'm actually very yeah, surprised so we hadn't I was seen that, bring yet. that up. This is actually a really important episode because yeah. the first time we see the Bat Signal, and I wouldn't have known it if they didn't bring it up. Yeah, yeah, same. I, I, I just assumed that we'd seen yeah. it a bunch of times already. Like, when Batman Gordon said was... that, I'm like, what? 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it was cool seeing the shot of it shining in the sky. Like at first, I just thought that was just supposed to be like a bats. Like they were just showing the the bat symbol just there in the background. It wasn't until we cut to the bat signal that I realized that was showing us the bat signal. You know, when they just showed, yeah. when they just showed the bat symbol, I'm like, is this like a zoom out of his chest or something? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is a really weird transition. <laughs> the um, the train scene was pretty cool where Batman was trying to save the hostage. I thought that was a nice scene. Um, oh, and yeah. I also like the ending where he ends up in where Wormwood ends up in the cell and Batman leaves him a cow. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. yeah, I love that end scene. Batman has sent you a gift. <laughs> it's like Batman has sent you an email. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Everest, what what do you think? Um. I actually really like this episode. There's definite, the, the it definitely should have been Riddler. That's how I, that's how I feel. I actually really love this episode, but like Riddler, like, why would you not do Riddler? I really like it, but Wormwood and the Baron instead of Riddler takes it from being like an amazing episode to just being like pretty dang good. Um, even though it wasn't the Riddler. I like the riddles, you know, seeing Batman being, like, solving them instantly, and Jim Gordon's like, oh my god, Batman, do you have, like, any idea of this? And Batman's just like, bro, I got you. And jo- uh, Gordon's like, oh, okay. Well, uh, Batman was just, like, being a smartass towards him. He's like, yeah. <laughs> isn't it clear to you? And jumps out like, the window. <laughs> oh, isn't it? It's so easy. He's like, a wax museum, where else? Yeah, like, it's, it's dude. Like, it's like, okay, Batman, no, not everyone has an IQ of 230. Yeah, not everyone's a genius. Chill. Yeah. Classic Batman. And so, I, I thought it was cool seeing Batman's, you know, intellect being put to the test, even though it should have been freaking Riddler. But, um, I, abs- I actually, like, love the twist where it turns out that, you know, uh, Batman was actually, um impersonating the Baron to get Wormwood into a spot that he couldn't, like, get out of. And I thought that was so cool at the end. I actually forgot that twist, like, completely, and so when I saw that, I was like, dude, that's that's pretty good. And then the end scene is great. I love it. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have, like, real complaints about this episode, other than it should have been Riddler and the Baron... You know, just being kind of a plot device wasn't, like, best use, but, yeah. I mean, I think him being a plot device was fine, because, like you said, when I first watched this episode, granted, I was pretty young, that shock, or that, that twist shocked me. I was like, what? It was Batman all along? And when you watch the episode, it's like, yeah, that, I mean, he was clearly setting him up, because Batman gives up his cape and cow way too easily. <laughs> And even when he's a, uh, he ju- he shoots his grapple when the roof's closing and the grapple breaks. Like he's going up that thing so slow. It's like, can you go up this thing like ten times faster? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's like he was obviously just he was like making it look like he was trying, but he was really just setting him up to get him later and get dirt yeah. on him so the GCPD could arrest him. He was trying just enough to convince Wormwood. Yeah, pretty much. And something else about the Gordon Batman exchanges, I think it's just kind of like their relationship has developed so much that Batman can have some fun with Gordon now instead of yeah, kind of just yeah. disappearing. All business and disappearing and yeah, yeah, and and also just something weird I noticed was when he's in the wax museum and like after the the hook snaps, the cord on the hook snaps, and he falls, and he hits that melting wax. It reminded me of how Clayface looks in the Batman. Yeah. I was thinking mm. he looked kind of like a Clayface kind of thing. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about, Everest? Cause uh, I, I know you watch the show. Yeah. Um. Because it was like... That oh, kind of, okay. it was, I, know, I know what you're talking about now, when he like falls and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the, clay, I mean, the yeah, wax is kind of grayish. Yeah, now you th- now that you say that, I uh, yeah. I, I almost look at that. I'm like, did they just like see this episode and be like, hmm, that would that would be a good design for Clayface. <laughs> so 
So yeah, I can't really add any much more, you know. I really like the twist. It actually surprised me the first time I was watching this episode, but once you know the twist and you rewatch the episode, like it makes sense he was just setting him up. And yeah, I think this the only big problem. I think the only big problem with the episode was that it wasn't a Riddler episode and that's not that's just a nitpick really. It's like they could have easily made it the Riddler though, so I just want Riddler. Where yeah. is he? Yeah. Well Where we'll be Riddler. getting him not not before long. So uh Connor, what would you give this episode? I would give it a C minus. C minus? I did not enjoy it very much. Ooh, I'm gonna give it an A minus. Damn. Everest? Okay, Everest, oh what would you give it? Um, I'm gonna give it. Oh, uh, crap. I can't decide. I'm gonna give it a B plus. Like, really close to an A minus. I, I really enjoyed the episode. Um. <laughs> Connor was no. just. Connor was just the negative Nancy this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Connor, I just man. Come hate on. everything. Come on, dude. <laughs> no, I think it's a really good episode, though. Um, I could probably, like, if I rewatched it one more time, my score might go up. I just, I, re I really wish it was Riddler. Yeah, it was like, it was right there for him to make it Riddler, and they didn't. I, th I think it, they probably didn't make it Riddler because they knew they were just gonna kind of make this guy look dumb in the end, and they don't really want to make the Riddler look stupid. You know who actually would have really worked at Clock King. Oh yeah, Clock King would have worked. <laughs> okay. So... I mean, it, some of the stuff was kind of the Clock King. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I didn't. Uh... Thank you. Okay. Ever. Yeah. Sure. Feel feel better about yourself. Thanks for having my back, back buddy. Yeah. I... Me and you were the only we're the only true Clock King. Okay. So next uh, time uh, we'll uh, be talking I'm... about. Two episodes of Batman in the Animated Series since one of them is a two-parter, Robin's Reckoning and The Laughing Fish.